Hello, Australia, and hello, world. We are here today for a discussion on the topic suicide, what the spirits say. And I would like to introduce now the Australian team. My name is Kate. I am in the Gold Coast. I have been volunteering for suicide prevention for the past few years, which has been one of the reasons I decided to change my path. And now I'm doing a grad deep in psychology while teaching mindfulness meditation. I'm also the co-founder and worker at the Golden Lights Spiritual Society. From Melbourne, we have Ellen Quayle. Ellie is a quality and competence manager, current volunteering at the Spirit Society of Melbourne and Poland Stable Spirit Centre. In the Central Coast, New South Wales, is Christine Seller. Christina is a retired nurse with expertise in quality assurance, risk management, and human resource management. Currently a member of Golden Light Spirit Society. Directly from Sydney, he is Fran Diogo. Fran is an undergraduate psychology student. Since her career shifted from business centers management to support people living with disability through assistant dogs training. Fran is co-founder of Light in the Child Spiritist Group. Finally, also in the Gold Coast, we have Kenny Fur. Kane is a year 12 student in a casual work volunteering at Golden Light Spirit Society. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the topic of suicide. As defined by the Department of Health and Human Service, we understand that suicide is a death caused by injuring oneself with the intent to die. A suicide attempt in another way is when someone harms themselves with an intent to end their life, but they not die as a resource, as a result of their action. Then we're looking now in the eyes of spiritism, and I will invite Fran. Can you explain to us how spiritism will describe suicide, Fran? Sure. So, um, as we understand in spiritism, we study all the divine laws, all the natural laws that govern life. So, we understand that we all have been created with vital forces and we have this existence to achieve something, to develop ourselves. So, when we actually try to attempt to take our lives, we are committing a crime because we have vital energy to lead us through this whole life. So if we're, if we're killing someone else as well, like homicide is going against a divine law. So we're basically committing a crime because we're taking something that was meant to be used for our advancement, for the advancement of others. So it is considered a crime. Um, of course, there's always other points that spiritism will always bring to us as well. So we understanding spiritism that someone who's, so desperate that they are thinking about taking their lives, they actually want to end their suffering. So there's a question on spirits, the Spirits book, uh, question 950, where Kardec's trying to um, get the spirits to explain. So why would people think that killing themselves will make them happier? To try and understand why, you know, people get to that stage. So the spirits say it's just a foolish logic because a person who does not know that life continues they're thinking that they're going to reach a happy end or finish um, end their suffering by committing such an act. But they don't know that they're actually um, causing themselves suffering by doing so. So we're going to, I guess, delve into that, more of that um, today to discuss it. But that's the summary, I guess, of the... How is important is knowledge, isn't it? Yeah, very important, knowledge. very important. <laughs> and what do you have anything to add, Ellie? Uh, yeah, yeah. So this, like Fran said, that the spirits they they brought us through through spiritism that we life continues and science slowly is converging to that. So only our body dies, but we don't die. So our consciousness continues, but because people don't understand that. And in an act of despair or of supreme suffering, they consider taking their lives. What happens is when they get to the other side of life, and that's what the spirits tell us, they fully understand that what they did didn't solve their problems. And, and like Franz said, we have the divine laws and 
through the divine laws, we have consequences. So we have responsibility for things that we do. And, but at the same time, we have a chance to come back through the blessing that is reincarnation. So the fundamentals is first, life continues, isn't it? After our body perishes. And the other is that we come back. And the spirits teach us that the reason why we come back is a education opportunity for us to resolve the issues. And we're going to be looking at, at that more deeply to resolve the issues that we couldn't resolve, but there, there are consequences. And sometimes there's consequences to our bodies, to our minds, but we do have that brilliant opportunity of repairing, let's putting, putting back uh, in order something that we took out of order before beforehand. I don't know if I made myself clear, but um, yeah, so the spirits say that there are consequences, but we have the blessing that we can, even with the consequences, come back and, and adjust things that we might have not solved. Yeah. It's interesting that um, the topic, because we're looking in the consequences in a, a spiritual matter, isn't it? Like, we keep yes. the consequences are like, what's going to happen if I actually end in my life? But what about the consequence that it takes us to that action? What actually brings us to, to think, even thinking about ending our life? And, and then is another, yeah. another subject very interesting because we have different ages, different group ages that you look into that and you see the difference. So uh, as, a, as a child, what you would actually be the consequences, what's going to take me to think as a teenager, as an adult, as an elderly, what is the causes that actually drive me to that situation? So I believe that's a good topic for us to actually discuss a little bit, on, you know, yes. to understand. I have been looking here on the, the statistics, you know, like in Australia, and according to the largest suicide prevention service provider, Suicide is the leading cause of death between ages of 15 and 44. Imagine that, the leading cause of death within that age group. Each year, over 1 million people reach out to Lifeline for support. 65,000 make a suicide attempt and nine die every day in Australia. Between those figures, it has been released that 70%, 75% of those ended their life are males. Despite that woman actually attempted suicide three times more than men. Where that coming from, isn't it? Let, let's just, before we get to, to conversation on that topic, remember that we need to be very careful on the statistics as well. Because different nations, different countries, you no, know, they they understand a, a suicide in different ways. So they don't have the same concept of what it means to die by suicide or to end their life. So it's important to remember that this is why we are bringing statistics about Australia. Uh, how can we actually correlate spirituality to these statistics that a woman attempted? Suicide three times more than men, and 70%, 75% of those ending the life actions are men. What do you think the statistics and spiritism have some correlation on that matter? Anyone? Um, I, can, I can give it a go. I think that um, there's, there's research in Australia specifically. I'm sure there is all around the world. Um, that states, and, and you can find that, that states that um, people who are more spiritual, they tend to have better mental health. And we know, and we're, we're going, going to discuss that, um, that they tend to have be better mental health. And consequently, they're less likely to do things as, as radical or as as concerning as it is to um, 
take your own life. And, and we can notice that we notice that sometimes women are more spiritual when we, we look in general, like statistically. You know, when you go to so the churches, isn't it? When you go to spiritual centers, the churches, different studying, meditation, there's always more women than a man, isn't it? Yes, there is. There is. And, and I think that that's one of the reasons because they do, perhaps they do attempt isn't it? The attempt to take their own lives. But at some point that might change because they have that understanding that life continues Mm -hmm. and they might change last minute or they might seek help. Whereas um, men sometimes, and there are other causes. I know Fran has a background in psychology. She's going to be able to even delve into that, isn't Fran? That um, yeah. Even not um, talking to other people or seeking help. Yeah. What do you think? I, yeah, I believe um, when we study psychology and also um, sociology, we look at a lot of cultural norms. And mm-hmm. the overall generalization is that men are meant to be tough. You know, they're meant to um, show that strength that they have. You know, like masculinity comes with that, um, I guess, display of strength. So, Uh, In a lot of cultures, um, men are educated not to talk about their feelings, not to show their feelings and not to even cry. So, you know, someone in complete despair might think that there's no other way because, you know, they've been told to repress their feelings. And, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, we can talk about our culture, but what we see here in Australia, I don't see a lot of parents 100 percent saying, look, it's okay. let's go to a, um, you know, a meditation center and you can open about your feelings and it's okay." Like I know a lot of parents are trying to go that way, the positive parenting and educate emotional education. So I think a lot of the spiritualization that we're talking about here um, that's normalized for women is because women is is seen as the fragile um, gender. So we, we, we have been given the permission to feel vulnerable, to show fragility. But what we understand in spiritism as well, funny enough, is that we can reincarnate as women or men. So I think it all depends on what we're trying to build in that particular um, existence. But of course, we're going to have our own um, patterns, what we've done in previous lives. And if we are a bit more fragile, a bit more sensitive, and it's okay for a man to be more sensitive. It's okay for a woman to portray strength. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we will learn to be in balance with masculinity and femininity, femininity, but we understand that at the moment in this realm that we live, there's still those norms, those things that are accepted and are not accepted. And I think that creates a huge burden on, on men's mental health and their access to means to commit suicide and be successful as well, I think, versus female. Yeah. Do you, do you also agree uh, with uh, what you have been learning, actually, uh, that Men actually they have a type of natural impulse to, to play things more, have games more violent. And What's the normal? Girls, yeah, they, and even yeah. a father relationship, father and, and, and a child, isn't that they, they like to fight and blah, blah blah. So and they become a little bit more impulsive on this challenge to be the strong, isn't it? What do you think, Kevin? Yeah. The only man we have in the group is a difference. Um, Woman is more like. The you know, step back and the man going to be like more impulsive and more violent on that like thing? I don't agree with the violent part at all. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't think I'm violent. Um, yeah, no, I basically agree with what um, Fran said, basically, because women have been told that they can show their emotions and stuff a lot more. And guys, you know, follow it up, tough up, man up. Great saying, man up, huh? Uh, yeah, no, you just gotta like power through it. Of course, it is definitely better, you know, talk. Um, I tend to talk whenever I feel down to people I care about. Um, you know, I feel like it's because um, the rate between women having more attempts, whereas men having more successes, I don't know how to word it well is due to the fact that women can reach out. They, they feel way more able to reach out, whereas men, they, like, as a guy, it's very hard to just think, oh, I need to tell this person how I'm feeling. You, you don't really. You just deal with it. 
Yeah, 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 makes sense. And, and interesting that we have we have been talking about male and, and, and female, and there is also a difference, isn't it? Probably a, a man who is on 40s or even on 8s is going to say some things like different on why they would do it, what they think about it. And let's see what the statistics say to us about different age group. I see here that adult, talking about the adult and elderly, that has been noticeable increase in the suicide in adults and elderly in Australia. The reasons have been mentioned pre previously, but to emphasize some of them, I will invite Christine. Christine to share a little bit of her knowledge with us. Christine was a nurse, and so probably she had had a lot of contact with adults and elderly as well. So what do you, you, you tell us about this, Christine? Um, well, Katie, the, in the nursing profession, you see a lot of elderly people who, like homeless people, um, and sometimes they are unaware of what they've tried to do and, and um, some of them have tried to commit suicide several times. Um, they've partially succeeded, which is why they end up in hospital, and it's really sad to see. But they feel they've got feelings of hopelessness and um, they don't have any connections. Um, they, they don't feel that, um, as Fran and Helen have spoken about and yourself have spoken about before, that, you know, um, that's a woman's thing. That, that's a, um, the caring, sharing female side of things. That's not what they do. Um, so there are numerous, pre, uh, you know, reasons and um, they feel it might be also that um, apart from in the hospital setting that um, persons in this group feel socially isolated, they might be alone, their partner might have died, um, they're isolated from family and friends and they feel useless and not wanted, not needed, and so they decide uh, that they've only got one option to take. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, as you've, you've mentioned in the statistics, it's, it's increasing in the 15 to 44-year um, age group. But um, in the retirement age, in, in the Defence Forces, um, they've got a program called Mates for Mates and they've got a lot of um, ex-Vietnam veterans and veterans generally who are um, deciding that the only way out for them because they cannot deal with what they've had to deal with in their life if they've been active in combat and we've talked about men are the, the stronger uh, sex that, that they they feel they they cannot deal with what they've they've um, had to deal with. So they feel the only way out is to take what is known as coward's way out in some respects um, and commit suicide. Now, in, from a spiritist point of view, and I'm only new to um, the spiritist group, um, so excuse my... Um, You're great. Yeah. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying. Um, that that they, they feel that... Um, there's no connection. And when you go and study spiritism, you feel that connection with, uh, you study the connection um, with others about people such as Alan Kardec, who's, who's made a lot of um, statements, um, the fear of losing capabilities 
all their capacities. And mm. because, as has been mentioned, um, the body is an envelope, is not who we really are. We're a soul, we're a spirit, and it's the spirit that stays alive. The body dies. The physical that we see dies, not the quite, spirit. It's quite something, isn't it? When we think about capacities, and you see that you you grow up, you study, 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 and then you work, you work, you work, and you actually pay the bills, you you bring up your family, and then suddenly you see that your physical capacities is less and less, and that's quite depressing, isn't it? We see a lot of uh, um, elderly, not very actually, even people around 70, 75, they feel like, oh, I'm not capable anymore, so I'm not... I'm not upcoming anymore. People don't like me as much because I cannot do what I used to do. So it's quite it's quite important to actually bring bring act, the, the, the knowledge of spiritism and understand that it's just a matter of time before we get a new envelope, like you said, Christina, and it starts yeah. over again. And the only thing we actually take to the next life is is really the knowledge we conquer during all this journey. And this That's is right. valuable. And this is gold, isn't it? And That's right. What, what, what do you think else? Makes sense? <laughs> yes, it makes total sense. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's very important. Thank you, Christine, for you bring up that. And then we I, I was looking on the Australian Bureau of Statistics 2050, 2050 is when actually the data showed that Australian men age over 85 have the highest suicide rate in Australia, more than double that teenagers. So, but this was in 2015. However, what we see today, no days, we can't deny that the past couple of years, the real pandemic has been the suicide among children and teenagers. And this is something worrying because we we spoke about male and females, adult, elderly, but who is actually our future? Who is going to be the adult tomorrow? Is our kids, is our, our youth group, is children and teenagers. And the increase of suicide in this group has been absurd. You know? So I, I, I think it's very important we realize that, for example, in Australia, more than 300 pe- 350 young people age 18 to 24, take their life every year. For every youth suicide, there are 100 to 200 more attempts. These figures released by the Health Direct website show us that suicide is the leading cause uh, among youth in Australia and how much this group is in risk. Health Direct suggests that young people are protected by attempting suicide if they are resilient and have positive relationship with parents or guardians, close friends and other adults. Then the question is, how hard can it be to be a parent? How hard can it be to be a teenager? (laughs) The question is, again, how such a relationship between parents and their kids can go wrong and how the thought influenced all these because that is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah. it, it our, our, our way to think is a mantra. It's what drives us as we eat, brings health to our body. So what is this connection? How can we help actually our kids? So now I will ask Ellen to jump in again and, and talk a little bit with us and because I know Ellen and Kane have been actually talking about this subject, and I would like Kane now join with Ellen and tell us a little bit how is this relationship between parents and youth? What is going on about the mental health in, in this group, and how can we actually do something, you know, in both ways as a parent? mother and it as a teenager son <laughs> let's do it please yeah kane i wanted first to thank you and acknowledge 
your presence here. I think uh, it's amazing that you took your time. It's all good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And I think that you can help us understand better um, the young person's view, you yourself being a young person. And yeah. we had a little chat about this. What might be, do you think, some of the causes why a young person considers um, taking their lives? What do you think? Um, well, and in your uh, experience as well, Kane, if you want. In, to. Yeah, um, a few triggers. Um, well, I'm just going to say something a bit relevant to this. Um, yeah. As a teenager, you know, like you, know, you talk to your friends and all that stuff, and then suicide becomes kind of the norm, even like just conversation. Like you stub your toe and you're like, oh, I'm going to kill myself. Like that's how like teenagers talk and we barely give it a second thought, but it's always like there, like saying, oh, I'm going to kill myself over this or something like that. Like even if you just like lose in a video game, um, whereas for actual reasons to try to like do it, because it's always on your mind. You have you have some like just it's like an inspiration, like it's there. Um, things can be just feelings of helplessness. Like for example, maybe just, just can't feel happy. Like I know a few people that like they just they try to enjoy life and be happy, but they just can't feel that emotion anymore. And it just really brings it to like, what's the point? Like, because like happiness is good, isn't it? Like, um, another one is just like the feeling of something just without an end. Like if, it, if you feel like something's just mm. not going to end, like there's no way out, you're just like, yeah. Oh, that can be an escape. That's a way out. Yeah. It really just comes when, you know, you just feel terrible, really. Be it by yeah. depression, loneliness, other sources i guess really yeah yeah and you said something very important when people feel that there's no way out and it was very similar wasn't it what with what christine said even with people from different age groups when they think that there's no way out they consider that as a way out and mainly don't you think Kenny? because people don't have a full understanding of that we are spiritual beings we're not just the bodies, because if they understood, do you think it would change a little bit if they knew that life, they knew for sure, a hundred percent? What do you think? What's our, what are your views? Honestly, it's, it's a bit hard to say. <laughs> uh -huh. um, like, because myself, I'm on the fence. i partially believe in this and i partially don't so mm -hmm. i just live life as as it be you know will be and that seems to yeah. you know help me stay in a good mindset because you know i feel like most things will just pass um yeah. but when it comes to like it it basically sounds kind of like a threat um i mm -hmm. don't mean that like it's hard to describe i don't it just sounds like if you kill yourself then you're gonna get punished like it sounds like a threat. It's more just like mm -hmm. trying to keep you in line, which yeah. I mean, that's one way to do it, but yeah, you more yeah, want no, to be but what there I was by will. You want to be be there by will. And if Absolutely. you like if you like knew for certain that that this is not the end and that life goes on and this is just a small phase, then well, mm -hmm. I don't want to say it's a phase because sometimes it's really big for people. And yeah, mm -hmm. but it's just a point and it will pass. And if you end it now, you're missing out on some of the greater things in life. Absolutely. And when, and when I said, yes, there are some belief systems that believe that there's a punishment or um, we prefer to say a consequence, but some people um, kind of threat, which is not what I meant, but like if I bring it to something. A, yeah. Yeah. If I bring it to a language that normally young people and people can hop in. Um, say if you were playing a video game and it was a virtual video game and you knew that every time that you 
when you were fighting and you lost your life, it was fine. But when you were fighting and you saw that it was too difficult and you withdrew from that game, the next time you played the game, it was just a little bit harder. Would you stick through that game a little longer? What do you think? <laughs> well, honestly, that if we're going to use gamer terms, um, yes. <laughs> it depends on the person. <laughs> it, like, it depends on the person, I guess. Um, like, honestly, because some people like challenge. Um, <laughs> if we're going to yes, be still going on, if we're still going to be going on like that, people like challenge, crank it up <laughs> to the hardest difficulty. Um <laughs> That's a great point, Kane. And let me just stop you there and you can continue. Yeah. The person who's, who's keen on challenge, they would face all the difficulties, don't you think? Um, yeah. If you think I that guess. they're going to do that on purpose because of challenge, let's say the game just presented the challenge the, itself. They would just uh, hang in there, wouldn't they? Um, yes. Like <laughs> my, myself. Um, because I, I I love video games. Uh, whenever I do one, I crank it up all the way to the to the hardest difficulty straight off the bat. Love the punishment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's terrible, but yeah. Um, if I may step in and say one thing, because um, absolutely, yeah, no, yeah, go ahead. It's a yeah. conversation. Okay, well, I I know that for sure because my experience would have been completely different to someone who never knew about um, the spiritual life and all that. I mean. I grew up in a family that, you know, always spoke about this because my it started with my granddad. So to me, it was it was a fact. And, you know, at one point I questioned it as well. I try to investigate life through many other perspectives. I try to go to a different friends, churches, and I was always searching for that meaning. But I remember as a kid, my mom taught me, like, for example, one thing that always helped me through my life was you have a guardian angel. It's always there with you. So it wasn't so much, oh, there's a punishment, but like there's tools. If you're finding things hard, you can connect with that angel. He knows you or she knows you. And, you know, you're never alone. So I remember in my darkest times, like being a teenager, being a, a rebel, because, you know, I was probably the, <laughs> the nicest rebel there is, but I thought I was a complete rebel and da, da, da. I would not talk to anyone, but I would have a conversation. I would cry and I would talk to my guardian angel. And I remember somehow an answer would come through. The next day, someone would come and present an idea or, um, you know, I would just feel a little bit better, you know, after having a good sleep. And, and those things to me as a, as a young person made a difference because I, I believed it and I felt it when I tried to connect. And, and I think it probably helped me in some ways, you know, how I see life to today, you know, when challenges happen, like Helen was saying, and, you know, King was so saying, basically, oh, yeah, Bring it up. Like you know. purpose, right? Purpose, purpose and, and purpose is and, what helps. And that and the connectedness, you know, think, yeah. feeling I'm not alone. Even if I'm completely physically alone, yeah. My thoughts can connect me to other beings that I don't see, but I feel. There's the feeling more yeah. than, than the seeing things. Yeah. Well, I just want to ap apologize in advance because if I do disappear, battery uh died. Um, but it's really about teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. So uh, I think, I don't know, do you think Kenya also went to the point on your question, Ari, or have anything that is still missing there? I, no, I, I think that what he said is very important because we can actually see what the teenagers think right now. And thank you. Um, no problem. Yeah, and I think that he 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 was speaking from his heart, which is a which is great as, for a teenager, and reflecting a little bit and helping us reflect. Um, we just have to remember a few things, isn't it? That resilience is something that you build, and it might be that we take an example like like we did from a video game. You have resilience in the game. You can develop that re resilience in life as well, isn't it? And something that's very important because you were saying, um, Kane, that people come sometimes and say things. It's very important for a teenager to seek help because 
we're not professionals. And even if we are, we have like a big heart, we want to help that person. We can listen. There are some steps. Um, the Are You Okay cam- campaign gives us some idea of what to do. But we do have to, after we do that, if we can see that the person is really, really concerned and has a plan and, and has all that in place to seek professional help. And I think that, that you are aware of that, aren't you, Kim? Uh, yes. That, yeah. 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 And it's just that. Yeah. And we, uh, this conversation actually brings to us the word materialism, isn't it? How can we actually separate now materialism and spiritualism? So it's two different things. When we understand that total incredulity, when we don't believe in anything, when we doubt everything as the future, uh, and having materialistic ideas, so that is actually the greatest of insight, incitement towards suicide, because we just believe everything is here and now, and Having things is more important than be someone, than be an spirit of light, let's say. So I, and then we, we talk a little bit about science. That is when we bring the talk of science and suicide, you know, what we have been learned so far and how that the life has been changing now. We see the, the education is changing. Even if, Fran, we are doing psychology now, you yep. know, you see so much, isn't there? The debates, yeah. even the teachers sometimes, they, they don't read the lectures, not the teachers, the lectures. The they, lectures yeah. they, they, they don't have words to explain some stuff, do they? They, no, they get couched no. in some drops that no science has put in there. This is empirical, this is statistics, but there is yeah. things that can be actually explained. And in one of the things is, what it really drives us to think about to die and don't believe that life goes on. So, so yeah, so materialist, materialistic yeah. ideas are generally what leads us to think that if, if all we live is now, um, if I'm in intense pain, I can end this now and then that's it, no more. But when we understand that life goes on, it changes, not in a sense of punishment. I think I think that's what Kane was trying to, to help yeah. us view. Spiritism, from this point of view, it was, all, it was almost like trying to remind us who we are. So we understand in spiritism that we are spiritual beings, that we're transitioning through matter, right? So um, our thoughts are creating our reality, but we are social beings we we are connected we're connected so you know there's there's a network of love around us to help us fulfill a lifetime that was planned and understanding that you know everything was planned you know our grandparents that came before our parents and then us um you know our spiritual mentors the kind of challenges that we knew we were capable of living was all planned for this life and we have inside of us the potential to develop so our existence purpose is to um, find that purpose, that goal of spiritual development, of connectedness, and see it in our day-to-day. So it's not like we live in two different realities. We see our material reality, and at the same time, we try to feel the connections, and through our thoughts, we can make very important distinctions. You know, when we're feeling sad and lonely, like Kim was saying, okay, I'm feeling sad, but I can open up, of course. So you can open up, so you can think about someone, you can talk to someone you trust, or you can, you can meditate, you can connect with nature, with all this amazing energy that is around us that will help us heal those things because we're living those conflicts that we don't know sometimes where they come from, but we, we're capable of dealing with them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be facing those challenges. I think spiritism gives us that certainty hmm. that you know we will reach the end of this life with more positive um, outcomes if we resist the temptations of you know the shortcuts and we give ma- the material things i guess the weight that they do have but joanna de angelis does tell us a lot about that how we can find our sense of meaning of purpose and our happiness is actually linked to that so uh when king was saying for example you know the youth they might be thinking oh you know i can't feel joy so that's it like you know maybe i shouldn't live anymore maybe they're lacking a purpose maybe they're not seeing their existential meaning so you know, having people help them through that search. And, you know, it can be through spirit, a spiritualist 
philosophy, but maybe it can be through meditation, through openness with others, because this social connection that we have as spirits in the material realm or in the spiritual life all starts because we have the will to do it. So it's our minds guiding us through that process of connecting physically or spiritually. And when we say, I want to, then I think that's when we're really putting ourselves um, open to that those channels, to open that transformation recognizing what we need to do and and you know we can go on yeah makes sense Kate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes it does yes um i just had one tiny thing to say about it is the fact that you were saying um with the teenagers and the lack of purpose um that is something i feel like really affects us as a whole like a lot of teenagers search for like meaning or purpose um and the lack of it does not affect them when they don't realize it but once it's pointed out to them that's when they start to realize oh i'm useless i don't have a point what am i doing here i'm just waste of oxygen and that's when the freight train starts coming in um so showboating no no not showboating that's the wrong word um bringing that to their face like find purpose may not be the best way to go about it because yeah if I know teenagers, as I know myself, um, it could potentially just depress them more. It's confronting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah just realizing, oh, damn, I'm useless. Uh, not the best feeling. Very, um, but what if what if people pointed out the good stuff that you already do? And, the and that's, that's you the have. thing. That's the thing with um, just people nowadays. We tend to focus so much more on the bad stuff like whenever something bad goes wrong we're like oh my god that was the worst thing ever like but we never say anything like the best or like amazing like we just go through and be like oh that was good and move on but the bad stuff it really sticks with us and that's something i've noticed um i have this little an analogy um with this uh these two um youtube channels um, where well, one is about the bad things of movies. It's it's basically all the sins of movies, like this this was bad, this was bad. And then there's one where it does all the good things about movies, and they both have the same name, similar sins and similar wins. The sins one has like, I don't know, 10 mil or something subscribers, and wins only has like one mil or two mil. Like the amount of people focusing on the bad stuff rather than the the good stuff and honestly the, the cinemas i've watched cinemas all the time but when i watched the wins one it actually just made me happier just seeing like the good stuff the positivity coming in so i feel like people surround themselves with more negativity nowadays and that's what really affects them but they don't notice it because it's yeah and that is a big talk yeah <laughs> we're not gonna be able to talk today probably we can yeah. create a, a, a program <laughs> on that one yeah. from one a, a talk per week, but it's a, a long talk. But that that's going to involve uh, social media, TV, traditional oh, media, lots oh. of lots of things, and not going to be for today. Correct, Kristen? <laughs> I was just I was just um, shedding some light. I didn't want to actually yeah. go yeah. deep into yeah. it. But but I think you yeah you said something some, something important is you know it's our focus as you know as human beings at the moment. It's a mantra, isn't it? It's a mantra. And, mm. and even, even comparing, for example, you know, like we, we know the COVID deaths number daily. We have a report. But who's talking about the suicide death numbers, you know, through this pandemic? It's just an example. So, you know, like the practice of gratitude is one thing that we learn in spiritism as well. And, and, and I know not even spiritualism, spiritism, spiritualism. So it's like King was saying, okay, how, how can we focus on the good? So, you know, the practice of gratitude, like you guys I know practice a lot through mindfulness. You well. said a, a word there, the gratitude. When we actually come back to the spirit and the knowledge, then we understand the, everything behind. And you, you understand that that is a cue, a long cue to actually be incarnated and you have been granted of the gift of life and you be grateful for that. You are going to give the value for the life as it deserves. Isn't it? And then we are... There is a say uh, one passage on on the gospel that I would like to read for for us uh, in the chapter five. Blessed are the afflicted. Uh, so 
that it, suicide together with madness and tells us that calm and resignation draws, draw from the way of looking at earthly life and from faith in the future, give the spirit a serenity that is the best preservative against madness and suicide. So a careful reading on this chapter of the gospel would be a preservative for all the use of humanity, because not only explains us the means of getting rid of the penalty, punishment, <laughs> but it also lets us to the good and evil to suffer about melancholy and etc. And, and then we, we look in all these and we start to understand we are here and we're going to be disappointed. We're going to be frustrated. It's going to be good days and bad days. But we are evolving and everything is a trial. Everything is a path to evolve. And if we understand that, we are grateful to actually having a chance to be in this path and to become a better person, a better spirit, a better being a better parent, a better teenager, a better grandparent, and there we go. <laughs> so gratitude is plays a big role, I guess. If you disagree, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I guess really agree. I, I like to think that the um that the little moments are like just the little things are what like make the the good things better. Or like because you can't have the good things without the bad. So like if you, you know, because if you didn't have any bad, then you wouldn't know how good the, um, you know, the good stuff is. So like, you know, for example, um, sports, each time you lose, it will just make the next win just that much more satisfying. Like, because you gotta always think about the good part, like something bad may happen, but the good part is what you got to look out for. That, that's, that's what I think. I think Christine wanted to say something. Yeah. Yeah, I was just listening to everybody talking and I'm thinking education, education, education. Oh. Oh. And it's just not happening in the way it should because when I did psychology, we talked about Freud and Taylor and we didn't talk about people like Joanna G. Angelis and others um, and talking about spiritism. Well, that didn't even that word wasn't even talked about. Um, if you went to church, it was God was mentioned. But apart from that, there was no real education. I think it's starting to come in now more with the mindfulness and meditation and gratitude. And one thing I was going to say before is about the language that's used. If we start to change the language, and in Brazil, I know through the conversations we've had in our spiritist group, um, it's, it's about the words that are used and they're not commonly used in Australia. It is changing with you guys who've come from Brazil and across the world. It's helped us to start to realise that there's other things that we need to consider, and it's all about education. Thank you, Christine. Yeah, I think what you said, you summarized, Christine, yeah. is the basis of the spiritist philosophy, which is your education, like people's education, isn't it? That's that's yeah. the purpose. So we can we can live fuller, um, satisfying lives because we changed ourselves. And yeah. therefore, the world, isn't it? That's right. I agree, fully agree. And like this is why this is why I think the analogy we we common commonly say in spiritism is, Earth is a school, <laughs> and what we're doing here is we're being educated. So we learn in life through lessons. But you know, to pass all the lessons, we have to build strength, build more courage, build things that through. Um, philosophies like spiritism, we can deeply reflect on and we can make that part of our lives. So we can learn those lessons. But the other good thing is we know that there's mercy. If we, if we fail <laughs> badly, we have another chance. So it gives us the comfort. So I think to me, that's what it, it's the, the main important thing. I know that even if I fail, there's going to be another chance. And even if I do my worst, there's going to be mercy. There's going to be, you know, 
people that will help me be lifted up. And, and this is what really makes it is there for we learn, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we learn. And then one day we learn. And we have the to chance. do it. One day I'll learn. It's a rehearsal. Yeah. A rehearsal. <laughs> it's a rehearsal. Yeah, we practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, the, the, the last thing I would like to bring another part of a, a, a text from the gospel, uh, comparing materialism and the spirit is to actually finish to the, for today, because we are we have a time limit there as well. And before I read this, I would like to tell a secret to everyone. Uh, I actually, Ellen was talking to Kane about the teenagers, the youth session, and she she actually recorded for us in Australia the TED about teenagers, isn't it? So that it was actually very well, I have to say, fitted in. <laughs> so everybody can come back and watch uh, uh, Ellen talking on the TED, 15 minutes talk on that top. It's going to be good. So the gospel, we, we see that to finish. When comparing the results of materialism with those of the spirit is but of knowledge, on this point alone, we are forced to recognize that where the logic of the first leads towards suicide, the second prevents suicide which is a fact proven on many occasions. So that is, let's open our minds to be the best we can be and not to have the best we can possible have. I think that's very true. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.